This is one of those games I own multiple times on different platforms and each time I attempt to play it, it starts off fun, followed quickly by frustration. Despite its early promise, I really do struggle to play more than 10 minutes of this one at any one sitting. Now, Zool is a very disappointing title for me. As a kid growing up in the 90s, I loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Sonic the Hedgehog, and like most children, I was happy to buy something simply because it looked nice. Now, apply that to Zool, the ninja from the nth dimension, a fast-paced platformer with some well-detailed graphics, and yet I didn't like it, and I still don't like it. Zool was created by Gremlin Graphics in 1993, and despite Commodore Amiga wanting to use him as an official mascot, he appeared on virtually every format at the time, such as the arcades, Amiga, Amiga C32, Acorn Archimedes, PC, Game Boy, Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive, and Super NES. However, the one that I'm looking at today, of course, is the Atari ST version. It's also worth noting that this is one of the many times where Gremlin were trying to put advertising into their games, with a certain sweet manufacturer getting the nods here, hence the first level, I guess. The lead character Zul being the same as the title is a ninja who has to get back to his home planet by stealing stuff within each of the zones. In that you have to get to around 100 pieces of candy before the exit to the level becomes unblocked. At the end of every third stage is a boss that you have to defeat in order to progress, so it's pretty standard stuff. As you can clearly see, the game is bright and colourful. Okay, this isn't the most detailed version of Zul, it definitely lacks the parallax scrolling of the Amiga version. The game is very smooth and Gremlin have put a lot of developers to shame by actually being able to handle smooth sideways scrolling on the ST. The port however does have a little bit of slowdown when the sprites start to pack the screen, and definitely on the bigger bosses. It looks great however and the music is pretty cool too. Gameplay wise, it is a bit of a mixed bag. The game does play well with the joystick, however Zool's speed is a problem along with the jumping which feels rather floaty. You'll want to run through the level, however because of the poor level design, you will regularly bump into an enemy or a spike trap, which makes you wonder why they bothered implementing his speed in the first place. The second reason why the speed is broken is because of the objective of the game. As you are required to collect 100 pieces of candy in order to progress to the next level, you are forced to search all over the environment as these items aren't exactly plentiful in some of the stages. Much like my comments on Sonic Chaos on the Sega Master System, having a fast character on a slow plodding collectathon is counterproductive to what the audience wants. You're happiest when you're running. I really wish that with the collecting, it was simply optional, because a lot of the time I get so bored that I simply give up. It seems like this game is running in a low resolution. The reason why this is a problem is because what is above and below you. It often leads to a number of cheap deaths, and when you die, the level timer does not go back. I especially hate World 2, the instrument level, because you can often get hit from enemies above you and spike traps below you. Also, finding the exit isn't always at the end of the stage. You have to go looking for that too. I remember playing the demo disc on ST format back when I was a kid, and it plays well because you only get to see it for 60 seconds, and there isn't even enough time to beat the level. So naturally, I didn't realise this was a collectathon back then, until I got the real copy of the game. As I said, Zool isn't a bad game, I've genuinely tried to like this one, but I just can't do it. It's a very disappointing game because of all the things that Gremlin have done right, but it's just simply the concept that's wrong. If only they made a standard platformer and made the collecting a bonus extra, then I'd look, look on this a little bit more favourably, um, especially if they improve the level design a little bit. But alas, even Zool 2 and the later Jaguar has pretty much exactly the same problem, so they evidently never really learnt from their mistake. These days Zool is now owned by Atari, which is really infograms in disguise, and they haven't done anything with the character since, and that's probably a good thing. But anyway, let's get on with this, let's get on with the playthrough, um, so I'm going to try and play this through as long as possible. Um, it probably won't go for very, very long, but nevertheless, let's get on with this.